So Thursday, we were heading for a meeting with my wife in the morning because all is set for actually for this weekend. We've prepared ourselves to travel, you know. So we had a meeting in one of the hotels. Left the house around 9, 15. As we are indicated to the hotel, you know, have to slow down then turn the moment i am indicating the hotel guys are opening the meru slopes hotel we hear like a very big blast very strong one then i can't hear anything with the car nothing has happened to the car but just turning my face i see this very big pickup just knocked itself with this tree to the hotel and we are right that side and the impact just to explain one of the tires is completely out and the airbag everything front the radiator is pouring water but what I could see inside that car, a small baby. Then I say, number one, why? Where did this car come from? Because mm. there is no road this way. You know you overtake. We are not in highway. It's just entering to the hotel. Even if you pass, that road is blocked and some people are working. So there is no road this way. So I cannot really understand why that car has to come at that speed. If he has to go, it's supposed to go the other way to turn. Came out from the car, and the first thing I see is the baby in, the, in front. Then the rest is story, because the guy is full of blood, and, but the baby was intact. He wasn't touched when they removed him. But the big mistake I saw, parents, you like your children to be a driver? Please avoid to put your children to hold the steering. That was the mistake that driver was doing. He was putting the baby. Why the baby was saved? Most probably the all impact that has hit the man and the rest Either the baby was floating somewhere, either the angel has come, according to the scripture, secured the baby, and yeah, then I was saying, the, the driver was saying, he was, he was avoiding not to hit our car, so he has to turn, and he has to make an emergency brake. So our third born said we were talking about Moses and he's very passionate about angels, the movement of God. So he said, oh, dad, you see what happened? That angel, the same angel that moved behind the children of Israel, and he went and told this one, turn that side. So I told him, but you know, God is not happy when others are hurting. You know, sometimes when you have a mission, I said, mission? Oh, I stopped discussion there. We could have been eight people, the workers, my wife and myself, maybe like most of us could have been in mortuary if that had happened. And this weekend could be a history. But we thank God, yesterday was really good and uh, we are happy to be here. Although the circumstances are not good, the Lord is our country, economy, marriage, life, the world is not good, but the Lord is good. So we have good God. Amen. Yeah, that is the great hope. So today, uh, briefly, I am known. Let me brag about this. I don't know what happened yesterday. Uh, I do lecture the whole day sometimes from 8.30 until 9. I cannot get tired. But sometimes also I preach on that time. 
So I am very time conscious. So I am known this pastor keeps time. <laughs> Some of you said, you don't look like according to yesterday, right? <laughs> Yes, yesterday was a little bit anointing and there was some touch. <laughs> so before I start my sermon, we must do some altar call. Or are, you, are you still born again, some of you? From yesterday's conversation, some people must have backslidden. Good. I want to read a scripture for us. The book of Acts <coughs> from... Uh, chapter 2, verse 12, no, verse 42 up to 47. Acts chapter 2, verse 42 to 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship to the breaking of the bread and to the prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need every day. They continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of the Lord, the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number Daily, those who were being saved. Let's pray. Father God, everlasting Father, thank you for being good to us. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to break this your great word in our midst. Holy Spirit, not by power, not by knowledge, not by preparation, but by your strength and by your power everything will happen and it will bear fruits speak to us in Jesus mighty name we pray amen, amen. Uh, I have been in church ministry minimum I call it fully the last 31 years, if I put it that way. I've seen churches from all numbers, tribes, race, maybe denominations, but there's one thing that comes out clearly in any generation, either location or place, people group, they are very fundamental and strong pillars for every church to be alive, to do the great purpose and the mission of God on this earth. The first thing I will look in every church when I go is those pillars. If that church has put its foundation on those pillars, that is the church. That is not only the church, that is the church will accomplish the purpose of God. And that is the church will take the heart of God to the world. That's the church will not even diminish like in five years, in two years, that is the church with its vision can cross to the next generations and generations to come. Amen. Uh, 
I was dedicated when I was 40 days to the church. You know the church dedication because our parents were to the Baptist church. So the Baptists, they don't baptize children. So I was dedicated to the church. But since my grandmother was very staunch Coptic, she cannot believe I'm not baptized. So according to the Ethiopian Coptic, you are supposed to be baptized when you are 40 days if you are a male and at 80 days if you are a female. So she really targeted that 40 days because, you know, grandmothers are very influential over their daughters and their children. So she, when she had planned on that, the 40 days, I was dedicated one month. I'm sorry. I, I was dedicated when I was one month because my mom took me to church after four weeks. Then on 40 days, my grandmother planned I should go for the baptism. But my grandfather from my father's side died, so they had to go for funeral. So she said, I will baptize him on 80 days. So on the eighth day, 80 days, everything was prepared. Then my grandfather from my mother's side died. So she was not able to do that. So I grew up. My mom taught me how to pray the Lord's Prayer. We used to go. There is another church exactly like AIC in Kenya. We have that. So I go and I know Lord's Prayer and that. When I reached seven years, my grandmother still came back, took me to the Coptic church, and I was baptized. I think by then I was an adult, so I can understand. <laughs> so I think one thing I love is I was given, including the name, before I was born, I was named Isaiah, then baptized, dedicated by the Baptist, I was dedicated by the Coptics, I was dedicated. When I became adult, now the other Baptist pastor found me, you must get a born again baptism. So I was baptized. When, when I am class eight, then I need to get salvation. A Pentecostal preacher came and Prayed for salvation the same day I spoke in tongues. Then, am I a Baptist, a Pentecostal, a cop? I continue. Okay. At age, the first Form 1, is here Form 1, class 8. Uh, in that summer, I gave my life. Then I joined high school. As I was preparing to become one of the best physicians, I love physics. Physics is my thing. Then the Lord spoke to me, you are going to be a preacher. Me, a preacher? Then I pursued my high school, but in the high school, I actually served as a pastor. For good years, I was the chair for CU and all. The Lord has been preparing but I told God, no way. I must do my physics and study it up to BA. Then I leave that kofia for your glory so that people cannot think I am, you know, some people think pastoral work. You come when you miss something, it's just the by the way to you pick it up. No, no, me, I want to be somebody who has finished somewhere in some discipline. Either it's a law, medicine, you know, sometimes. When I was in the medical farm before I became a pastor, then people say, wow, this man was a doctor, but he's a pastor. So you have some backup so that people cannot think you have come or something else. Exactly that's my intention. I want to do physics, create something, then pursued, got the good grades, and prepared to go to university. Our country that time closed all universities. <laughs> University were closed for two years. My physics passion has died. Why it is closed is another story. All university students went to the military war to train them to protect the country. Because an African is notoriously religious and fighter. Both. So it works both for both. Then 
He closed all my roads with rock, as David and Job said. I completely refused to, to think anything else. Then I love also mechanical things. This. Then I went and registered to do mechanical things. It didn't work. One day I argued with this God. What do you want? He said, I want you to preach. So I have remained. I just joined. Uh, casually the church picked me. You go and study. One year, there is this training. Before I finish that training, the Lord said, this is the time, young man, go and serve. From that time, all the way through, and to this moment, what I've been doing? Preaching, planting churches. Two churches in Kenya, in the refugee camps, Dadab, Kakuma. One we have handed over until the Somalis are wondering, why are we putting cross in Kakuma, in Dada? Planted one church, Kariobange, one church for Isili. The churches, there are so many Ethiopian churches. When I finished that, I thought I'm going back home. Then God said, no, 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 you're not going. Now you are... Uh, I have taught you English. Yes, that one is for reference purposes. <laughs> you are going to preach for me, for Kenyans. Oh, these people are there. <laughs> then God opened doors. We thought it was one year. Only Meru, we are almost 10 years. So, now we feel home. We feel successful, accomplished. With all that... There is this thing God is raising. I've been watching God. What is your plan for our country as a Kenyan here? I am seeing things, humanly speaking, when you look at them critically, politically, economically, everything, we are not doing well. Even sometimes spiritually. Because whatever happens in your surroundings is affecting you. When... Right now, the South African Airlines is in, under the threat. I was reading, 1,700 staffs are losing jobs. That is a very big economic impact, even for everyone. The same, how many supermarkets went down? Banks are under threat. Many things. Where are we heading? But today I have a message for that. There is one big institution God is preparing. The only solution for our country, for our generation, is the church. Amen. 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 If I can make it specific, Hekima Center, you are strategically located on Konyange Street, where people are afraid of to walk, and you are actually at the right place. Amen. Amen. So what are these pillars for a vibrant life church. They are very basic, they are simple, but I want, to, I want us to have this. I'm talking to you as a messenger of the Lord. This is the word of God. A vibrant church. The church that is needed by the community. The church that is looked by God. The church that connects Great God, holy God, powerful God to the nation that is desperate, destitute, defeated, discouraged. For that church to exist, it's good to have a very good strategic plan. I don't have a problem. It is good to have what are those things, you know, in the business today we, we have, you know, our mission, our vision, our core values. They are very important. I don't have a problem with that. It's good to have structures. I get headaches sometimes with structures. Because 
I have established structures in some churches and God intentionally comes and crush those structures until I don't have answer. So God, where are you taking? He said, you have just wasted five years by structure. So what do you want? I want a divine structure. So I thought this is divine, you know. Uh, no, 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 no. It's good if you have structures in Hekima. It's very important. But your structure may help you to prepare for another greater mission. What do we need to be the church that has solution and answer for the community in my surroundings? I love the, uh, the sister that shared about evangelism. I was almost changing my sermon because I am an evangelist by passion. Can I change? The only thing I can't do is I've already sent the idea for the reverend. I could have said, the Lord says. <laughs> but I'm preparing for another invitation. Reverend, since I'm being inviting you anytime, you prepare another invitation. <laughs> I want to talk about evangelism. That, that, is, that is where my heart flows. Even if I will not give that topic today, even I will not skip that. The first, the first, the first, 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 first pillar for us Christians, we need to be devoted for the following things. Knowing them, it is okay, we know them. They are pillars. But the key thing for me, for us, is we lack that devotion. We lack that passion, commitment, and being immersed into it. Thank you. Today you have answered one of my greatest questions I had. Is that, why are we so nice and dignified in the house of God when we sing, when we preach? Where we spend the night... The whole night I could hear some music. And it was the whole night. Means there is energy in human being in this town. Yeah. I arrived from the airport around one in this city. And the whole city was full of young and everybody was full of energy. Alcohol, drug and sexuality. It has... Then I stood there, God, one day in this town, in this city, all these young people, they will come and be drunk in the power of the Holy Ghost. And that nakedness and that miserable life, that hopelessness will be transformed by great power because of the revival that is bringing up. Don't be surprised. But the good thing, there is life. I love that devotion, that mission. When we do our things, there must be that. The main thing, what I can do in life is this. How is your level of devotion? This devotion is, they were totally dedicated. Day and night. Not only one hour. Not only on Sundays. It requires, it requires more. I thought we have, uh, everybody is lost, but it is not lost. There is great hope, by the way. I arrived in that city and I was told, the pastor told me, Pastor, you, you have arrived because weekend I was traveling to another place. Please preach on Wednesday. We have a midweek service. I was doing like this. Wow, midweek service. How many people come? We struggle, right? Midweek. And this is one of the busiest, busy city in U.S. I could not imagine to see people full. Then I said, wow. My friends, even Europe, 
they have noticed there is no hope without this God. They are coming back to it. Amen? The world has given its devotion to other things from in the past. We thought we've gotten it right. One of the challenges I can challenge still is we are so much dignified and very nice protocol and we, we reserve ourselves when it comes to the things of God. When we give, when we enter in the house of God, we are next to the coffin. We don't move. How many people love dancing, jumping? Who told you that is only for our thought? How many of you see this football, the Premier Leagues? Then, you know what I watch? I love football playing. My boys are mad about it. Eh? So, but what I see is the congregant. Big, very dignified people. Hold on. Then I said, means there's still hope. The only thing, we change our gospel to the football size. When it comes to stadium, people can afford to dance and jump and they are in their 50s. <laughs> when it comes to church, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Na, 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 na. We lack devotion. When it comes to giving, so what were they devoted? There will be no a model church that I can emulate to implement for 21st generation Christianity. The best model found in the book of Acts. Most people go and do research. Let's go and research the Willow Rock Church. How they make it. Yes, it's good to do it. Let me tell you a simple thing. Before we go to Willow Rock Church, let's do this one. This Willow Rock Church of Jesus Christ in the book of Acts. First, their devotion was to the apostles' teaching. I know this is a follow-up class, right? Most of you. You might be expecting today some anointed divine revelation. There will be no special anointed today beyond this. Just to be my Sunday school teachers for today, it will help us to focus and refocus again. First one is we need to devote ourselves to the actual teaching of the apostles. The actual, the original teaching of the apostles is the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ. I don't think we should look any other model than Jesus for us to be practical and meaningful church. We lack these teachings. Simply, what are the teachings of Jesus Christ? Just pick, let's say, someone on the mountain. How many of us are challenged with that? Some of them, they can't even, uh, uh, they are not applicable for us. Because they are completely against the norms that we are living. This Jesus is uh, very, very funny. He says, when someone takes your coat, give him your trouser. <laughs> when someone asks you, add for him another one. Because our ideology when you see someone is not taking, grab it. If you get another one, just grab it. Possess it. This same Jesus, his rules and regulations. Blessed are those peacemakers, as we are very known by causing trouble between 
brothers and sisters and bringing some commotion inside the church, outside the church, inside the office? Have you seen some people intentionally, I can't call them gifted, they are signed in the offices. Before nine o'clock, four people have collided. What? One person has passed wrong information. And they make it that their lifestyle. And they are okay with it. When you come and tell them, oh, you're teaching a Jesus it doesn't work in this generation. When you are slapped this way, give. <laughs> that one you can't even talk. We can't. Men, you are a man and you are slapped. Do you know the answer? If you are a very patient person, you answer, did you really slap me? <laughs> that is the patient one. If you are impatient, before this one reached to you, <laughs> in many areas, these are very few examples, we are not taught the teachings of the doctrine of Jesus Christ, so we have trouble. Teaching of the scripture truths will give power and authority for the church. No one will stand it. No one will oppose it. Because the more we go deeper to the teaching of Jesus Christ, we become the people who loves the community. We become the people who cares for others. We become more Christ-like. And people will look at us, wow. There was a time we stopped even going for evangelism. And when we come out from prayer room, and also some Muslims, they will look at us. They say, you people look very different. Can we greet you? Yes, greet us. Then, what is this thing? Because we are surrounded with troubles and problems. And what's this? Then that will give you an avenue. The more we come closer to the teaching, because... Uh, I was, I was really convinced that there is no other way we will transform a human intellect without education. Because we cannot convince our generation by emotional, you know, emotional words, sentence. Those are not even grounded. The second pillar for the church to be vital and meaningful and a solution for this community is true fellowship. I loved yesterday. For me, yesterday was full of that conviction, that home fellowship. A fellowship has no limit that does not require or subscribe to any other things. A fellowship that is based on one unit is called the house of God. No tribe, no language, no status, no class. When the church develops such fellowship, Everybody feels belonging. Hmm. I belong there. I belong there. Without you knowing, people actually, they just count themselves. Sometimes I walk in the street, people would say, I'm your church member. But I see him chewing Mira and... Uh, <laughs> oh. You are? Yes. How? That's my church. I always feel good. If a sinner calls the church is his church, means this church has done something in his life. Amen? I 
have a challenge for for our fellowship now. Do you like challenge? Now let's talk. You remember the talk? <laughs> where where do you like to go when it comes to fellowship? I want to go and fellowship to my people. Can you define my people? For some, my people is people from Tarakanidi. For some, from Homa Bay. For some, from Kitale. For some, from Nandi Lands, Highlands. For some, from Coast Shimba Hills. For some. So everybody, some, they won't get from Mwingi Makweni. Who are your people? If you are looking for your people, your fellowship has to be tested. Your people are one. Those are washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter where they come from. No color, no race will work here. The strength of a true Christian fellowship is the blood of Jesus Christ and the word of God and the Holy Spirit, the power and the presence of Holy Spirit. So if the fellowship is founded on that, that fellowship works. Yes, there are challenges in those days because there was a new church. There was some Jewish from diaspora, some Jewish from Chicago. There was a challenge of the way you talk, the tone. Hmm? You, you know those challenges? The way you handle, you know, people from diaspora, they look at them. They live like Romans because Rome was the king by that time. Some of us, we have traveled from other places. Even the way we do shopping, we look like uh, others where we were. We are different than when we come to church. Oh, we don't need those things. We don't need to do this. True fellowship will transcend anything that you've been. It has to go beyond. It has to go get and its roots, which is the New Testament spirit, the blood, the Lamb of God. Jesus and the Holy Spirit. If you base your fellowship on that, your church is going to give answer. In that fellowship, I want to add a little bit something about breaking the bread. Uh, this is both. The, the New Testament church, one of the things is they make sure they have the Lord's Supper as something very powerful spiritual strength for the church. How is that? Does that work? Amma, you have are we good? This the church has to follow always this one. For me, I don't want how you take it, but that the Holy Communion thing, eh? actually they used to do it every time when they meet. Some churches, they made it monthly, others once per year. Others, they made it for salvation, others for celebration, others for memorial, whichever way. But one thing... I believe. I told you I have a Baptist Pentecostal com uh, combination together. Yes. But for me, that is one strong essence the church should not miss out. Please uh, work on this. Jesus had a reason. He told us, until I come, when you take this, you will be my witnesses. You know, non believers who look at us, what are they taking? And they used to tell us back home, don't go and take that thing they give you. The moment you taste that thing, you will never come out. And one of the ladies gave example. Imagine my dog went in that compound by mistake. <laughs> and uh, this thing they give, the leftover, 
she found the leftover and she ate. From that time, that dog remained there. Imagine. Uh, hmm? If a sacrament brings the dog to the church, <laughs> never, never leave it. We should not make some other extra decoration for the church. Her essence and power are spiritual. Amen? Divine. Me, I will not be impressed when the church becomes so nice. I've attended these big, big churches. You, you see them in the TV. Do you know what I have noticed? Basic things have been pulled out from the church and some new things have arrived. Simple example. There are those lightnings at the back of the preacher. They come lights. And have you seen smokes? And, and when he walks, it looks like he's walking in the mighty power of God. And you see clouds coming out. When you see that, and light is blue, red, and this speaks. But is that a deco, a performance, or a real life? When I look, the New Testament church has nothing to do with these lights. But there is one light. The moment the apostles stand, there is this power comes out and goes to the darkest places of the world. And witchcraft, sorcerers, people with difficulties, sicknesses, we disappear. I'm calling us back to be live, not live, not on the TV, live on the heavenly realms. I hope you'll not invest on those big lights. Employ two evangelists, those who are anointed by power. Let them go and preach in the forests. That will come count in the kingdom of God. You attend this 9,000 sitters church and you see this. Everything is I'm not saying against technology but make sure they don't take the place of God. Amen. The other one pillar is they devote themselves for prayer. Can you say prayer? prayer? A Muslim can go five times to Salat. A Hebrew pray three times per day. How about an evangelical believer? How many times? Check your prayer programs, personally as a family, as an individual, as a church. The first time I arrived in a church and I saw announcements being spoken. And I see the church is like 1,500 people. And I was told in the announcement there will be a prayer night somewhere. Wow, I loved prayer and drove my car and went. Arrived at that place. Only found the secretary in the compound. I have just listened, there is a prayer. Oh, you have come for prayer. Enter. So with a lot of energy, entered into the church. Then I see empty seat. Then the same secretary told, I will join you, come. That's the prayer room. Then I asked, uh, where the people are praying? I am coming. <laughs> Waited. Stayed there. After 30 minutes, two sisters came. Then again I asked, I'm asking the church prayer place. Out of 1,500, the secretary, it is her work, she has to be there. The other two, maybe, that day they were really Attacked by enemy. <laughs> they were really looking for divine intervention. Don't take me wrong. I am praying.
for our country until God squeezes us to become genuine prayer warriors. God might take some of the jobs from many people. God, God, heaven, where are you? And God will say, what happened? I'm saying, my job, your job what? You know, I am the main provider, two, three. God said, uh, can we discuss that one after prayer? God will bring the whole nation into their knees if he wants until everybody become a prayerful nation. Amen. Amen? We bragged about our military defense. When I was in high school, I could hear our president used to say, we've got established the most powerful military defense in East Africa. Not only for Ethiopia, it will defend the whole of East Africa. Ooh. It was true, by the way, there were one million powerful soldiers surrounding the whole Addis with a very chain. No one could touch it. But because of that proud and pride and running away from God, God waited one year, two, three, four. Do you know? God chased that powerful military with a small, tiny bandit from the north. Kadogo tu, hakuna weapons. Kitamba hapa, neka clash. Because that government fought God. That government said there is no God. That government said nothing. That government closed churches. God looked at, have you closed my church? He closed our Baptist church. After 17 years, God came. Government, kneel down. Church, get up. Only our, our one simple church has come with seven denominations. This side, that side. But what made us? God changed us, a prayerful nation. Whether we like it or not. No doctrinal discussion. No denominational division. A Baptist, a Pentecostal, a full gospel, an SEK. Everybody kneel down, my friend, for survival. Oh, my God. Then the first time, rock up a son. Then the Anglican will hear, huh? <laughs> so in Ethiopia, there is no church that you can't hear tongues. He, he makes up theology. There is nothing that this is what we do. There is nothing you do. It, it is God will do it. It is our way. He is removing any barriers. But the church needs to come back to her knees to become a solution. Don't run for fundraising. Fundraising, it is very good. I will tell you that. But God, please raise people of prayer. Amen. Just someone who come. I understand you people have got this the whole week, right? My challenge for now, I am having the service in primary school. From Monday to Monday, it's a school. So, only Sunday. So when we want to pray, we have to look at a place. You've got a place here. Why don't you close everything for one month? Let people say these people have become mad. Amen. Just to see some wonders around. Don't be surprised. Just come out from the economy of time on human style and everything. By the way, you know when we go, when we leave this heaven, we will leave these 12 hours, 8 hours. Some of us will see 20 minutes. Tell this man to, pray, to finish prayer. <laughs> Kwanzaa prayer. They are going to pray the next one hour. The next 45 minutes. Rebuke the devil. I am in prayer. I'll call you when you finish prayer. 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 The earnest prayer, that prayer these apostles prayed. When Herod was very mad, he picked that guy, James, killed him, slaughtered, and then 
they said, wow, people, we need to pray. And they went into the room, and you can't be, you are not told. The whole church came, whether they are workers, it doesn't matter. They were saying, God, can't you listen to our prayers? Peter is tomorrow on the line. I thought Peter, I'm a choker. He gave up. In fact, the way he gave up, you can tell. Even if I wake up, they just call me once, then I'll be cut. That is why when the angel enters in that room, he can't even hear until he touches him. Peter, <laughs> Kwani, you are sleeping. What do I do, God? This thing has really finished me. James, James is gone. I'm following. He's smelling the, the blood of his brother. But the earnest prayer and devotion, powerful, sincere, dedicated, focused, passionate before God has reached heaven. There was no degree or qualification. There was no study. There was nothing has been done there. The only thing that was presented to God was the cry out from the heart. Sometimes I feel very, very embarrassed when I pray in English. Sorry to say that. Because I have to study grammar. It is not even my mother tongue. It's not even my father tongue. If it, it is very foreign for me. I just got it from Kenya. God doesn't like our language. Surrounded by heavenly beings. Twelve apostles. Twelve elders. Twelve elders. Just a newborn again man. One day. He saw us casting demons and praying. The next day when we left. One of his son was demon possessed. And this man didn't know what to do. Do you know how he prayed? God, I know one thing. When my cow is hungry or in trouble, I hear my cow says, Boo! Today, I will say like that, you must answer. And the man, literally, the way that cow cries, to his mother, I am crying. Oh. Do you know the demon in the sun started screaming? And the guy continued. God answered, the boy was delivered. He gave us that testimony when we are back. Sometimes we see who is someone anointed with a special prayer, a touch, oil, something. We look, we pay so many things. We even pay, pay tickets to go West Africa, East Africa, North Africa, South Africa. Wherever we are going to get this. Some people have made it that since they are, we are very foolish. We have not used our authority. They came in a small clay. I'm going to throw this clay down. When it cracks, if you get the pieces, that is your unlocking sick. I went Middle East I brought this I went Israel this oil we allowed people to make business on us we've kept our prayer power and opportunity and access free of bundles free of GB free of data free of airtime Safaricom just sent me a, a, a what we call SMS if you have not paid your bill by is it today you are going to be disconnected I said, you disconnect. I cannot be disconnected from heaven. Amen. Amen. How is the prayer in Hekima? The first thing we see is, who is coming for prayer? Passes. Ah, pass, passes them. When passes around, everything is around. Okay. Then we bring all powerful prayers. God, look at because even pastors, they need encouragement. But pastor will tell us, for one month I'm not around. You people keep praying. I'm telling you, we'll be diminishing every week. Every week. Every week. Are you devoted? Kenya is looking for a church. I miss the Kenya church, the one I know. When I arrived in mid of 90s, I felt strong 
presence of prayer on this land. Then in the city center, you feel the presence of God. Slowly by slowly, late 90s, that has reduced. Then, but there is something picking up, coming up. Because we've lost the battle in the past. What the church missed, without knowing, the, the church went to the extreme. The other church went to the corporate. We have very sophisticated church in this country. Very powerful. They are really nice. Some of them are state churches. Some of them are the best in many performance. The others also went to the other extreme. The other, they have become the most cunning and miserable. But the people are still looking at church that has answer for their needs. The church that brings solution. The church that is genuine love. The church that is genuine fellowship. The church that loves God and its community. The only church that can survive is the church with prayer. Prayer brings heaven down. Prayer, prayer will turn everything upside down. I hope you are in the project. You are doing some projects, right? As a church. It's very good to have them. But they need to be accompanied by prayer. The result of this church, there was full of wonders and signs. When a church does that, the final, the final, the final, my last, my last uh, pillar, we said, the teaching of the word, the Lord of the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then the fellowship, then prayer. The last one is the oneness, the unity. This is a pillar. I loved that. It is really amazing. They have demonstrated their unity. Because of this, let me tell you, it was automatic. Signs and wonders, they were there. When the church began to put the word of God at the center of its worship, and when we make it is our final court of appear, the scripture is our guideline. Then we come and we put what? Fellowship, a Christian fellowship. The living together, the sharing, the eating, the partaking. That will be another thing. Then, when we add prayer in that, we do all these things in unity. Wow. Now, you know these signs and wonders? You don't even need them. You don't have to look for them. There will be a manifestation. It will be there. And it's not only in one person. You don't have to pay. You don't have to invest. They will become. They are like that. You see things happening by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen? You are not missing power, signs, and wonders? How many of you are scared of those? Because some people, have, they have shown us some drama. We said, oh, those things are not. But they are very important for the church to exist. Because the church is divine. Some people really want to make, that's why I don't like when the church become too corporate for me. When they become too much on the dress code, when they become too much on the way I talk, I said, where is the place for God? Right? So we need this divine manifestation. But those ones, they can't just come. That's the result. That, it will come automatically. Then, after that, the giving, the the giving will be like automatic. No coerce. You don't need even to have this. We have to do it. I have done this because people are not giving. I was impressed in West Africa. There were three envelopes when we arrived on the seats. Say three of those. There I said, one it says special offering. So we all the lecturers invited in that church. So all of us just gave 
then the Asha came to us for the second round. You know, they go dancing, and I love the passion. What I like, I didn't like the three times, but I love <laughs> the passion. <laughs> because we already, we told the lady, we have already given, now we don't have. That's also another way of exploiting people. You put 3D envelopes. But what I love is the passion. That enthusiasm to give. No uh, limits. Some of us, we are quarreling with 10%. Am I giving gross net? <laughs> Should I give from this and that? I wish we knew the blessing of, I'm not talking about giving, but give. You need to give so that we can continue. There are the impact for this kind of church. There will be an addition of new converts every day. Huh? You hear that? What will make people... They just see wonders, they see love, they see fellowship, they see the belonging. Ah, this is where I want to be. You don't even have to. Someone just walked one day. Then he came to our church. Then who told you? I was just told. There is a very nice church in that primary school. Oh, really? He came and that person looks, you know, the people you don't even... Give him a very nice seat. He's a, just a, a casual worker. He came and sat. You know how we passed the street. He said, oh yeah, welcome, welcome. But I will never forget this man, what he did. On a one of our fundraising, we are raising funds so for, to buy land. By then, we were buying land. We were building a small structure. He calls me. He worked somewhere as a plumber and he asked the lady to pay him his salary in kinds. And she has a lot of sugar cane. He told her, tomorrow I have fundraising. Can, I, can you give me this sugar cane, please? Then I was called Saturday. There is a sugar cane for fundraising for tomorrow. I said, sugar cane. Yeah, I'm looking 600,000 sugar cane. Sugar cane. That sugar cane came. On the fundraising, it was sold. Do you know how much that sugar cane was sold? 36,500 Kenyan shillings. Church, as I conclude, this will be your season. It is your season. It is our season as a church. Right in the East Africa business hub, city of Nairobi. What you need to do is get these pillars in order. Have a powerful teaching of the gospel and the scriptures. Let there be a genuine fellowship. Let there be a prayer. And unity in the spirit of the Lord. Be united. Get organized. Be one. Speak like one person. Don't say when the house is falling apart. You know I have told them. You are inside the church and when problem comes. I told, I told them. Don't be that person. Yes, we began this church. When we face challenge, face it together. The apostle's secret was like this. Any problem rise, 11 apostles will stand next to Peter. We are together. Are you together? Are we together? Are we one? Our pockets are one. Our names are one. Our identities are one. If we do that, we are the church the world is looking for. You are the church. Konyange Street is looking for. You are the church, the city, and the city council, the government is looking for. You are the church with a solution. You are the church with answer for this generation. Shall we pray?
loving father thank you for such a divine presence thank you for your love thank you for your great manifestation in our lives for giving us and allowing us to serve you in your house in your temple lord and we are not such significant in this journey but you have chosen us to make sure your your great mission is fulfilled in our life in our time thank you god for reverend arono and the church you have positioned them this place they have gone through ups and downs and you've given them favor they have done it this far lord this is the place that your eyes have looked at to bring salvation and solution for the most desperate people and families in this town lord i pray let them get the season and the fortune time to walk with it with your vision lord may they bring your kingdom closer and closer to the people those who are lost as they prepare to preach as they prepare to pray as they prepare to evangelize lord i pray may you add energy passion and devotion dedication day and night speak to men and women on this house lord there are so many people needed for this great work of god i thank you lord i will see this in my own eyes when you bring this church to another level of ministry thank you god allowing us to share your great word your everlasting word use it for your glory if there is anything that is not pleasing you lord let it not be remain in any of their minds your word remain forever in jesus mighty and powerful name we pray and believe